Ever wondered what it's like to stay in a $1,000 a night hotel room at Disney World's flagship resort? Let's find out. I am of course thrilled to take a look around this resort, but first we're gonna make a stop by the room, which yes, is ready ahead of check-in time. I'll explain, because we have a very special surprise to start our resort tour today. <laughs> If you know anything about Disney World hotels, you probably know that Grand Floridian is considered the flagship and it's got the prices to match. And I know what you're thinking. Quincy, you skipped the check-in desk. What are you doing? And I did skip the check-in desk, but I did it on purpose. Like the other Disney World Resort hotels, you can use online mobile check-in to check in here. I did so. I even marked that I would be here ahead of check-in time at 3 p.m. I marked I would be here at 10.30 and my room was ready at 9 a.m. To use mobile check-in, you're gonna need that My Disney Experience app. You will just put in all of your usual check-in information, like a text message number and things like that. And then you can get a text and or push notification when your room is ready. We are taking a full tour of Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa today. This is a deluxe Disney World Resort. It is one of the most expensive on property and it's got a good amount of luxury. I'm super excited to take a look around. And when I say luxury, I mean it. This resort has received a AAA four diamond mobile four star and was voted one of the top 50 resorts in the world by readers of Condé Nast Traveler. So it is pretty prestigious. It's about 40 acres with 900 rooms and it's styled, as you can see, in a turn of the century Victorian style. I need to go upstairs. Oh my gosh. Fancy elevator. Now keep in mind that early check-in is not guaranteed, but you can certainly request it. Also, if your room is not ready when you arrive, you can leave your luggage with Bell Services so that you can go enjoy the parks or Disney Springs or just hang out around the resort without having to lug your luggage around. 5229, this is us. If you watch my regular resort tours, you would not believe how much me trying to get in my room my editor has to cut out. Oh, it's beautiful. And we kind of cheated and got a water view despite booking a gardens view. All right, our next step is to take a look around this room, of course, but first, we have to get to our surprise. What am I doing back outside? Patience. Patience, I will show you. On my way there, I'll note, you probably notice it's pretty gloomy. It's also chilly out. It's about 58 degrees, which is certainly not shorts weather, unless maybe you come from a very, very cold place. It can definitely get a little chillier in Florida. Our fun surprise is that we're headed to the Grand Floridian Spa which actually just reopened today, the day I'm filming, January 26th. So we can stroll right in. I think I'm gonna get a little bit of a manicure just to experience the reopened spa vibes. Now you might know that spas have been largely unavailable around Disney World since the park closures in 2020. So this is a pretty monumentous occasion when a spa reopens just because it's not very typical. This is also where we'll find the health center. Let's head in. Ready for the reveal? Bam. I picked this weird greenish blue color. Listen. If you're gonna have a staycation at Grand Floridian, you gotta go all in. You gotta go to the spa, especially the newly reopened spa. All right, now back to your regularly scheduled programming. What was mere moments for you was a 15 minute walk for me from one end of the resort to the other. So not the smallest resort in the world, but we're back in the room. We're ready to do some fancy room touring. This is a thousand dollar hotel room a night during some seasons. That's wild. All right, so we did this part earlier, but you enter, you've got your closet here on the right, bathroom on the left, and then you kind of emerge out into the main room. Pretty standard hotel room, but large. You've got two queen beds, little vanity in our bureau. What would that be called? Side table, I guess, in between them. Then bureau, maybe? What does bureau mean? Uh, you've got this big unit here, which is most of the storage, plus your mini fridge with your TV. A door for connecting rooms, if that's something you're interested in. Recycling bin, sofa bed. We'll take a look at that, we'll pull it out, we'll do a redecorating montage. Really cool loopy mirror thing. Very nice view. Wow, look at that. And then you've got a little desk with your coffee and stuff like that. So we will take an in-depth look. Do you have your fancy pants on? I do. Normal Disney hotel door, that's probably unsurprising. What's exciting about the entryway is this. Good golly. Your closet isn't super large. Keep in mind this resort is old, so if it is expensive, but some of the newer rooms might feel a little bit newer because 
at other hotels, they weren't built in the 1980s. One of those telltale signs is a smaller closet. This is a pretty small closet. I've seen larger at other resorts, but it's still relatively spacious. You've got this nice storage unit here that comes with your safe. You've got your hair dryer, extra pillow and blanket, and the creme de la creme of this room, robes. Yes, and no, other guests didn't leave these. These are robes for your use while you're here at Grand Floridian. And if you really like them, you can go purchase your own downstairs. Now to solve the mystery of the other half of the closet. So you can see the robes again. Hello. Luggage rack here, ironing board, iron, and tons of coat hangers, plus valet service for your laundry, if that's something you're interested in using. There's still a good amount of storage space in here despite it being a pretty small closet, so I don't think you would have too much of an issue. As you can probably tell, this room sleeps five comfortably between the sofa bed and the two queens. Keep in mind that if you do have more than two adults in the room, it may uh, garner an upcharge to your nightly rate. That's just something to check in with when you book. There are a few different categories of rooms here at Grand Floridian. We are in the base room, which is an outer building, non-club level room. From there, you can also get club level rooms, which are all located in the main building or the Sugarloaf building. Also, there are deluxe rooms and suites here at Grand Floridian. And then there are the Disney Vacation Club villas too. So the different room types do scale in price. So do the different views. We actually have the lowest level view, which is a garden view, although we actually did luck out with a little bit of a water view with the marina here. There are also lagoon views and theme park views, theme park views being the most expensive, of course. Theme park views are so expensive because you can see fireworks from your room, baby, like not having to leave your room to watch Disney Enchantment every night. That's a pretty big perk. So that's why those rooms are the priciest of views. So like I said, you've got your connecting room here. I don't have a connecting room. Like I didn't book two rooms, I'm alone. But if I had a big family, you could do that. You've got your recycling and trash, very important. This bureau is very nice. Something I've noticed in some of the older resorts, in some of the more expensive resorts, is that the furniture seems more like real furniture than vinyl-y feeling installations. This is like, I think this might be like real stone. It feels like marble. And then this is real wood. So it's a pretty nice piece of furniture. As you can see, this inside here has my favorite type of fridge that you can get at Disney World Resort Hotel. And that's these mini fridges that still have a good amount of space to them. They've got a spot for cans, little door space, and several shelves inside. I am the queen of leftovers, so I enjoy filling my fridges up when I stay at resorts and then eating my food in the middle of the night. Don't judge me. Older resort, you're gonna have a little bit smaller drawer space in general, but there are a ton of drawers. So this unit has eight drawers to it. All of them are about the same size, which is pretty small, but because there are eight of them, that's gonna be some pretty solid storage for you here as well. Now you can tell that the furniture in this room has been redone because you can see that there are outlets in the furniture. That's a telltale sign. Of course, they didn't put USB plugs in the furniture when they built this resort in 1988. So there have definitely been some updates to this room that you can spot there. You've got some necessities here on top of the dresser. You've got how to open the sofa bed. I will be needing this because we follow instructions in this house. You've got your take along guide to the magic as you'll find at any Disney World Resort Hotel. This is pretty special. There's in-room dining. So a lot of the resorts are not offering their in-room dining at this time. Grand Floridian, however, is. So if you see me eating miso glazed salmon in bed later, mind your business. And then of course there are some enhanced cleaning measures as well. All of this is seated below this nice standard Disney TV. Moving on, we do have our sofa bed here, which we gotta do couch science before we do bed science. It's pretty comfy. It's also big. This is like a really big couch to have in a hotel room, which is, I mean, this is a big hotel room. But uh, yeah, it's pretty comfy. Of course, being a deluxe resort, you're gonna have a balcony and it is a sizable one. You've got these big, beautiful windows. I actually love the panes on them. It feels very classic with all the Grand Floridian architecture outside. If you don't wanna look at those windows, you've got both privacy curtains, which I would use here, especially at night, considering there are pathways directly outside my room. And then of course, there are blackout curtains. These are gorgeous. Oh my gosh, you guys, look! The curtains have hidden Mickeys in them. <gasps> There's skating Mickeys here too. Okay, I've calmed down. So outside, so what's nice is that I can hear the Grand Floridian atmosphere music, which is this beautiful old timey sort of jazzy music that plays around, or ragtimey, I guess. And you've, I've got this lovely view. Even the lowest views at Grand Floridian do tend to be very pretty because odds are you'll be looking at manicured grounds or architecture of the other buildings, which is absolutely gorgeous. They aren't completely private patios. They do have these privacy barriers, but you are like on the same 
space. There's not separate rooms to the patios, but the patio is large. It's very, very long. This might be the largest patio I've ever had on one of my hotel rooms in Disney World. You've also got these beautiful like ironwork chairs. It's This is such a classic like outdoor set. You can see the resort's kind of quiet today. Grand Floridian does get really busy. It does have 900 rooms, so you can imagine why, but it is the slow season and it's the middle of the day on what day of the week is it? Wednesday? So there aren't a ton of people out and about here at the resort. They're all in the parks having fun. I get to go have fun in the parks tomorrow, but in the meantime, I'm gonna see if I get stuck on the balcony. No. So one of my complaints about this room is that there is a desk, which is great and good and works, but it is occupied with the coffee machine and the icebox. Now the good news is there is a table that slides out here. So if you need added surface space, you can slide that table out, slide it around the room, put it in front of the couch, put it next to your bed, do whatever you want. No one's stopping you. Did I get my nails done to match this chair? No. And if I did, I wouldn't have done a great job because they don't super match, but they do a little bit. Speaking of this chair, there's a not so hidden Mickey right here in this beautiful like lattice work on the back. And then you've got a Keurig machine, which is one of the nicer option coffee machines that you can have in a Disney World Resort hotel room. Tons of Joffrey's coffee and tea and creamer and whatever you might need to get some caffeine in your system. There's even extras over here hidden behind the ice box. And then a sizable ice box as well. Lots of cups and hot cups and cold cups. Pretty sizable mirror here. Not full body, but you know, when you have multiple people getting ready in the same room, mirror space is important. And the side slam. As I mentioned, you've got queen beds in here. They have these very luxe looking headboards that are like the cushiony, like fancy kind. Can confirm they are real cushion and not like plastic. And then also look at the wallpaper. Here we have your side lamps. These are controlled by these little switches. Keep in mind, they do switch off both on and off. So if someone in the same bed doesn't want light and someone does, you don't have the option to have one have light or the other, which is a bummer if you're a big late night reader like me. Solid amount of space here between the beds. There's also a solid amount of space in general in this room. Plenty of room for activities. You've got this pretty big side table. There's two more drawers here that are pretty sizable. I'll show you those in a sec but no under bed space here. So it's a good thing because you won't lose anything under the bed. Bad thing because you can't toss your suitcases down there. On the side table, you've got your telephone, a little pamphlet about telephone safety, another outlet here, and your phone, which has been sanitized. And then if, if you use these little tassel things to open the drawer, I love that. You've got pretty sizable drawers here in the side table as well. Each of the beds have four pillows, so you'll be super comfy. You've also got that extra in the closet, so there are plenty even if you need to toss some on the sofa bed. And you can always request more if you are in need. And then I'm a really big fan of art in Disney hotel rooms, and this is an absolutely gorgeous print that's in here. And then a thermostat, which you can set to your liking. I have it set on 70 because I've lived in Florida too long and now 60 degrees feels very cold to me. Now, as I mentioned, this can be a $1,000 hotel room that we're standing in, but rates do vary depending on the season. For instance, right now it is value season in the winter and in around holidays, that's gonna be the peak season for you. And you can also find special offers sometimes to make things a little cheaper. Outer building rooms like this one do tend to range from $760 a night to $1,560 per night. Whew. Um, standard rooms at club level tend to range from $920 to around $2,070 per night. Deluxe rooms at club level tend to range from around $1,260 to around $2,370. And then suites can range anywhere from $1,640 to around $4,430 per night. That's expensive. This resort is so expensive. On average, it is probably the most, if not right in that area, most expensive resort in Disney World, sure there are more expensive rooms elsewhere, but just at the baseline, you're gonna find some pretty high prices here. So if I'm paying such high prices for a good night's sleep, we should probably see how comfy the beds are. Don't you think? That means it's time for <laughs> fancy bed science. Tally ho! Ugh. Oh man, have I just not done this in a while, or are these beds comfier than usual Disney beds? That that felt good. It didn't quite feel like jumping into a cloud but it did feel like jumping into maybe like a thick fog. It's very comfy. Disney beds do a really great balance between being firm and soft because people like different things and lots of people are gonna be staying on these. Uh, this is comfy. I could go to sleep right now, but that's not good science. Plus the pillows are over here and I gotta try those. Optimum head sinkage. I can't wait to go to bed.
I am so excited to see this resort and I can't wait to go to bed. Worth $1,000? I don't know, you tell me. We have to complete our bed science with sofa bed science, which we do gently because I don't wanna get hurt. But first, redecorating montage. that sofa bed almost eat me <laughs> that little placard thing told me to keep both feet firmly on the ground and i did not listen and i almost got eaten by the sofa bed but i didn't here is what the sofa bed looks once it's turned into a bed this is actually the easiest sofa bed to open besides like the actual murphy beds in some of the other rooms um but let's see how it holds up with my science okay not nearly as comfy as the main beds of course but not uncomfortable like it doesn't have any of the, it's very supported. It doesn't have any of the like uneven support that can happen with sofa beds. That's why I like these little like twin sofa beds. I don't think your kiddo is gonna have any trouble sleeping on this. I don't even think a grown up would have any trouble sleeping on this. The other beds are better though. I'm, I'm gonna sleep over there. This is fun, but I'm gonna sleep over there. All right, now let's check out the beautiful bathroom. So here she is. This resort of course has a lovely, like subtle Alice in Wonderland and Mary Poppins theme. You can see that right here with this so cute Alice in Wonderland silhouette. I'm watching through all of the Disney movies right now and Alice in Wonderland is the next one I'm on. So maybe I'll try to stream it tonight. Otherwise, this bathroom is very large. You've got this huge, beautiful double vanity with these gorgeous countertops. I want these in my house. And then you've also got a lot of space over here for activities and then a whole separate room where you'll find the toilet and the shower slash bath. This bathroom feels a lot more luxe than many of the bathrooms at the Disney World Resorts. You've got these hand towels here that are available, a trash basket. There are no drawers or anything under the bath counter. You've got this very, like, oh my gosh, why did I do that? You've got this like expensive looking tissue holder, which, okay. Um, oh, yes. I thought there wasn't one, but look. No, nope, that's not the side we like. <laughs> Huge mirror. Definitely two people can get ready in this and you can see me do this. Very pretty embellishing. These gorgeous like goblet style lights on the side too. Pretty well lit in here, which is actually surprising because sometimes these older rooms can have not the best bathroom lighting. Two sinks, which is great. And then there's a ton of toiletries in here. You've got facial soap here in the middle. And then what do we have? Vanity kit, what's in a vanity kit? Beauty essential tools, cotton pads, cotton swabs, and a nail file, mouthwash, shower cap, sea salt body lotion, sea marine conditioner, and revitalizing shampoo. There's more of that in the shower as well. So that's a good amount of toiletries for you. Some more hand towels and regular towels over here. Plus, I guess this is a hamper or a waste bin. I don't know, but that's fancy. <laughs> then before we check out the commode room, we have our full length mirror here on the back of the door, which is great because you can see my fancy pants. This is a fairly sizable little side room. I mean, it's not, it's a small room, but it's big for what it is. You've got toilet and toilet paper, of course, added toilet paper up here on this very cute little rack thing. Plenty of towels and washcloths. Note to remember to conserve water. Fun. I like to look at the shower curtains for hidden Mickeys, but I don't see any. So behind the pretty shower curtain, we have our nice shower. Pretty wide shower head, soap dish, there's two soap dishes, and more of those conditioner, body wash, and shampoo toiletries, plus a bath soap and your bath mat there. The tub is sizable, so you could certainly have a comfortable bath in here. And you've got this beautiful tiling on the wall as well. I will say this is not the fanciest shower I've seen in a resort bathroom, but again, it's not the newest either. And that is what a thousand dollar or even 1500 on really busy times room looks like in Disney World. But you're not just paying for the room, you're paying for a lot of other amenities that Grand Floridian offers. And I think we should get exploring to check some of those out. How are we gonna know if it's worth it if we don't take a walk around? Let's go. I'm gonna start our walk around in the lobby, but something that feels very fancy is that all of the buildings have their own like little mini lobbies. Obviously there's no front desk or anything, but I mean, look how gorgeous this little building is. It's just one of the outer buildings, not even the main building of the hotel. Fancy elevator. We've got lots of resort to see, but our first stop is actually gonna be right here by our hotel room because I need to put food into my body because I've yet to do that today. 
just Quincy things. So we're gonna stop by the quick service location here at Grand Floridian for a little snack. Gasparilla Island Grill is the main and only quick service location here at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. It is gonna have your pretty standard fare like burgers and sandwiches and things like that. It's a really quick and easy spot to grab a meal. They also have specialty Joffrey's coffees and such. Mobile order is available and I think I'm just gonna head inside and order. My favorite thing here is their mac and cheese and that's what I'm getting. They've got a full meal portion and then they also have a side portion which is what I'm gonna go for because that big portion is daunting. This spot also has pretty long hours. It's open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. so you can get some late night eats if you need them after to get back from the park. As you saw outside, there is plenty of outdoor dining space, but there's also a good amount of indoor dining space in here. I think I'm gonna take my eats back to my room since I am so close. There's also this chocolate sculpture of Remy in here, which is maybe the best thing I've ever seen. Although Remy looks like he's seen better days. Eats acquired and I'm headed back to my room because what good is a fancy hotel room if you can't eat mac and cheese in it? All right, I went for a side mac and cheese and a caramel macchiato because it's freezing and I need my coffee. And I went sweet today because I wanted a little treat. Coffee first. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. The good thing about Joffrey's coffee is it doesn't ever really get as like super, super sugary sweet as Starbucks. The coffee flavor kind of like lives, lives on. This is super warm. It's like warming. You know when you feel warm liquid go down your throat? That's what's happening to me. And it's got a, not, a lot of great vanilla flavor, but again, I can still taste the Joffrey's coffee. I get this again, only if I'm in the mood for sweet, but if I'm in the mood for sweet, this is a winner. I'm hungry. <laughs> Yum. Mm, that's good stuff. It is like creamy mac and cheese. It doesn't have a baked top or anything like that, but it tastes a lot like Velveeta, but slightly better. So it's like super creamy, super cheesy, so delicious. It is a crime that this mac and cheese is available just steps from my hotel room. And it's a crime because it's basically robbery and theft because I'm going to spend so much money on this mac and cheese. I am so filled up on mac and cheese and ready to go. But we're going to start a tour from all the way over at the lobby. So I'm going to do the walk and I'll see you there. All right, I'm back in the lobby. When you're in here, you can really see why it's called Grand Floridian and why it's the flagship. You've got these stunning chandeliers stained glass domes in the ceiling just several levels of gorgeous hotel and what used to be a giant bird cage yes really i remember seeing birds in there when i was a little kid and look at that elevator everything's so fancy in here now keep in mind just because everything is super fancy at this hotel doesn't mean you have to be this is still a disney world resort hotel it is very kid friendly and people are going to be walking around but they're going to the park parks in so as long as people are going to be wearing suit and ties in the lobby Although you can, if you're feeling fancy, no one's gonna stop you. The lobby here often has live music, such as a live pianist. Hopefully, we can see one of them later. There also used to be the Grand Floridian Society Orchestra that would perform in here. Unfortunately, they have not returned since the park closures, and I don't believe that they're set to, which is so, so sad, because I do miss having full orchestration in here. But I mean, just walking around, you can see how gorgeous this hotel is. The foliage in the lobby, the architecture of the lobby, the furniture, the flowers, it's intricate and beautiful and feels very much like you are a fancy turn of the century person. <laughs> uh, here's the, the grandest question of all. Why have one grand piano when you could have two grand pianos? Now, of course, the lobby is where you'll find the front desk for check-in. So if you don't use mobile check-in like I did, you can certainly stop by the front desk. You can also do that if you just want to pick up a room key or anything like that, or if you have any questions or need anything. As with all Disney World resorts, I encourage you to check out the recreation, poolside activities, campfire, lawn games, Mickey tie-dye, all sorts of fun stuff. And if we want to talk general layout, this first floor is obviously going to be the lobby and lots of guest amenities, dining, as well as shopping. Same thing on the second floor. Third, fourth, and fifth floor of the main building are all club level rooms. You cannot access them if you are not staying there. Uh, there's a private elevator to access them. So getting up there, you're gonna have to be paying for some of those more expensive rooms. More in general layout. Here is a full resort map. We are here in the main lobby, but our room is over here in Sago yes. Cay. You can see that there are five different resort buildings with Sago Cay Sugarloaf, Conch Key. Key. Sago Key, Key or K? That's the question. Sago Key, Conch Key, Conch Key, this is hard, Sugarloaf Key, Boca Chica, 
and Big Pine Key. And then you've got two pools, Courtyard Pool and Beach Pool. The villas, the Disney Vacation Club villas are over here, as is the Disney Wedding Pavilion. We'll take a stroll over there. And then there's also a convention center located here at Grand Floridian. We popped outside to the entranceway of Grand, Grand Floridian, which is gorgeous. And there's that beautiful music playing. It kind of sounds like the same music they play in Tower of Terror and I'm not mad about it. This Porcashare Air is where you'll get dropped off if you aren't driving or if you're taking airplane transportation. If you are driving, parking, self-parking is right out front here as well for a fee of $25 per night. And here's also where you can access bell services if you need them to take your luggage to your room or hold your luggage before. <gasps> Goofy. Goofy and Pluto just popped. <gasps> oh my gosh. And Donald. <laughs> He's my favorite. It's three of them. They look so cute in their 50th wear. I love Donald so much. Anyway, while, they'll get, while they get settled, out here is where you'll find one of the bell services desks. There is another inside and some pretty cool old timey transportation. Not that it's in use, but you can see there's this beautiful carriage and this old timey automobile as well, which I love looking at. And that's sort of where you'll end up if you get dropped off here. But let's go see our pals, especially Donald. So something that you might spot while you're staying in a Disney World Resort hotel right now, like Grand Floridian, is some of your friends might pass by like Donald, Yuffie, and Pluto are here today. I have seen different combinations of those three around the different resorts uh, during my stays and I always get so happy to spot them. It is such a pleasant surprise. Hi Donald. Did you know that you're my favorite? Yeah, you are. I know. As you should be. As you should be because you're number one. Can we take a picture? Yeah. <laughs> I love him so much. He blew me a kiss and then when I blew it back, he said his heart beating. I want to come. Right. Well, we got lucky. A pianist came out to play. So, Grand Floridian has a pretty wild amount of shopping for a resort. This is our first retail stop, which is Curious or Clothiers. So, Curious or Clothiers has women's and men's designer clothing like Tommy Bahama, Ralph Lauren Polo, and things like that. Some Grand Floridian specifics are in here as well. So these are going to be nicer options in general than you might find in your typical resort store. Look how cute that Grand Floridian t-shirt is. But there are perfumes and it actually smells pretty perfumey in here. But this is actually a place where you can grab like more high quality clothing, not necessarily like straight Disney souvenirs, but actual designer Disney souvenirs. Oh, they even have the $1,000. Lux logo jewel deer hat. What do you want? A stay in the room that I'm staying in or that hat? Same price. Towards the back of the lobby, you can look for this chip and Mrs. Potts is over there. And you'll find the Garden View Tea Room, which is not currently open for their tea service, but you certainly can come sit back here. You can still hear the music of the Grand Floridian pianist. I see a bride and groom out taking photos. That's so magical. That's another really great thing about Grand Floridian is that you will tend to see a lot of weddings. Can be great, can be not so great if those people are crowding out if it's a big wedding, but um, I see brides here all the time. They always look so beautiful, it's so romantic. Look at this mirror. Now that's a good mirror. Prior to the 2020 closures, this room did have afternoon tea and occasionally princess teas and things like that. I wanna do that so badly. I love tea, um, but unfortunately it hasn't returned yet. But Keep an eye out for it. Otherwise, the first floor has your elevators, your restrooms, and then we can go this way to see some more shopping and dining. Sandy Cove Gifts and Sundries is uh, kind of the like basics shop here at Grand Floridian. You're gonna find gourmet gifts, fine chocolates and candies, Grand Floridian merchandise, and sundry items. So this is where you'll find my favorite, the Essentials Wall. It also looks like they've got the Alice in Wonderland collection that I love so much in here too. It's a relatively small shop just a little room but it's got a lot of the basics that you might need in here it's also got pretty lengthy hours which is great like i said some stuff for weddings since those are a pretty common occurrence here and some disney vacation club merch as well plus a little section of souvenirs including the alice in wonderland merchandise i have way too many mugs at home but i just don't know if i can resist this you've also got a little bit of grocery over here plus some more mugs look at those those are cute but essentials wall i have literally shopped from this essentials wall when i've been hanging out here at grand floridian they have medicine which i often need and a little grocery keep in mind these always come at a premium compared to what you'll find at the grocery store but it's good in a pinch if you need for instance a freezer pizza they've got them they've got them 
the DVC villas here, of course, do tend to have kitchens or microwaves and things like that. Which is why you'll find a slightly more stocked food section here in the gift shop. All right, let's keep on keeping on. This is one of my favorite Disney Vacation Club sort of display advertisements in all of Disney World. It's so fun, especially because I love the concept of people wearing top hats and suspenders on a beach. That seems ridiculous. This guy's kind of scary. Speaking of Disney Vacation Club, that is Disney World's timeshare program, and there is an information center here if you would like to learn more about joining it. There's also one over in the actual Disney Vacation Club building. This little sort of rotunda style room has a couple of the dining options branching off of it as well, including 1900 Park Fair. The 1900 Park Fair currently remains unavailable, unfortunately, but it used to be a character buffet restaurant featuring American cuisine. You could have breakfast with Mary Poppins and friends and dinner with Cinderella and her family, including the Abel stepsisters. I really miss this one. It was a super unique meal. Obviously a princess meal is very exciting. Another really great thing about 1900 Park Fair is that it has a 100 year old pipe organ inside called Big Bertha that uh, plays music every once in a while, which is really cool. And then just around the way here, we've got Grand Floridian Cafe, which is a very beautiful um, cafe. It's a casual restaurant, not super expensive. They serve blunch and not brunch, blunch and dinner here. We're between hours for it, so you'll see that it's pretty empty in there right now, but you'll find Southern cooking, salads, and sandwiches. I had brunch here recently with Molly and one of our YouTube managers who was visiting, and I had Eggs Benedict, and it was so delicious. You can tell you're at a luxury resort when they put the towels out when it rains for you when you walk inside. I'm walking back to the lobby because I forgot to show you something that I enjoy. So many of you probably know that Grand Floridian is a very famous spot for around the holidays because they do a multi-story gingerbread house right here, but you can't actually see confectionery creations year round. You remember that Remy we saw at Gasparilla Island Grill. There's also this chocolate sculpture of Cinderella Castle with the fairy godmother and Cinderella. This terrace is another great place to hang out when it's a little nicer out than today, but it is gorgeous. You got views of the pools and of course the beautiful gardens and landscaping. This probably looks pretty familiar because that's Sago Key. Sago Key? How do we think that's pronounced? And then we are back by Gasparilla Island Grill. Of course we went in there earlier, but this is where it's located. Still on the main building technically, but out on this kind of outer edge of it. And right next to it, there's a pretty fun amenity as well. Arcadia Games is Grand Floridian's arcade. Let's pop inside. It's a pretty small arcade. It's a lot bigger arcades than some of the other resorts. <laughs> this is massage chairs. Here's where you can see what that theme park view might look for, like for people who have it. Here at the marina, you've got a pretty great view of Magic Kingdom over there. And of course, this is going to be a great spot to watch the fireworks. All right, you might think the resort kind of ends over here, but there's a lot more going on. And you're like, what's up with that? This way is the walkway to the Magic Kingdom. This is a relatively new walkway. They had Previously, the only way to get to Magic Kingdom was via boat or monorail, but now you can walk. It's about a 15 or 20 minute walk, depending on your pace. Usually about 15 for me. It is a gorgeous walk. It's lined with beautiful lampposts and you're looking out over Seven Seas Lagoon. I actually see a lot of people taking that walk right now. So not the worst thing in the world if the monorail looks busy or if the boat looks busy. This resort is also home to a 27,000 square foot convention center, which is what's going on over here. So if there's a convention going on, you might spot that this resort gets a little bit busier. It's not the biggest convention center on property, so even with the convention going on, you probably wouldn't notice too much. There's also a business center in here, so if you've got business -y needs, printing, airlines, things like that, you can just pop in here to help those out. Between the main building and the convention center, you'll find the Grand Floridian bus stop. So though there is monorail transportation to Epcot and Magic Kingdom, plus the boat and the walking path to Magic Kingdom, there is only bus transportation to other areas in Disney World. So this is where you would wait for that bus. You can see that it probably does get pretty busy. They've got sandwich boards out here, noting where the different lines start. Um, when we get out here in the morning, we can check out how long these bus lines are before we head on over to Magic Kingdom. I think that would be valuable. But yeah, it's right here. It's a pretty small bus stop since though this resort is large, it's not huge, 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 huge. And just keep in mind that Grand Floridian can share its buses with the other monorail loop resorts. So they can get pretty crowded. That can be a minus. So as I mentioned, there's a lot to see on the second floor of Grand Floridian main building as well. But we're gonna check out outside first so it doesn't get dark. If you're looking for some recreation, you can head on over here to Captain Shipyard, which weather permitting, today there's not much going on. 
You can take fireworks cruises, guided bass fishing excursions, and you can even rent pontoon boats. So definitely a very unique, not super unique, they have this at some of the other resorts, but it's definitely a valuable, I mean, cruising in a pontoon boat around Seven Seas Lagoon. Now I know that today might not seem like a great day to go swimming, but Disney pools are heated. <laughs> And you might be here on a great day to go swimming. So let's check out the first of the two pools. So this pool is relatively sizable. It doesn't have a slide or anything like that, but it does have zero depth entry. And another notable thing about Grand Floridian's pools is they have much nicer beach chairs than you'll see at most other resorts around Disney World. They are cushioned, they're spread out. It is more of a luxe pool day experience here. Your kiddos might not like this pool as much as they'd like, say, the Big Blue Pool over at Disney's Art of Animation, but it's a gorgeous, relaxing pool. I would hang out here. You can also find the Courtyard Bar over here, which is, of course, a pool bar. They've got lots of options for you, and even some food offerings to go with your pool day if you need them. There is a hot tub here as well. Now, something interesting about Grand Floridian is some of the rooms have private balconies with jacuzzis. Those are, of course, gonna be the upper price here, but it does exist. Look at this tree that has all the pink flowers on it. I do call my cat Sugarloaf. I think about that every time I walk by this building. Because <laughs> he's a sugar loaf. He's so sweet. And he's shaped like bread. One thing that is kind of a bummer about this resort is that you do have to walk outside to get to your building if you, from the lobby. So if it's pouring rain or anything like that, you've got to walk outside. Which, when it's so expensive, maybe that seems like a little bit of a minus. But I personally love a walk outside when it's not pouring rain, even when it's a little chilly. So it's not too bad for me. This is Narcuzzi's, which is a signature dining restaurant. Very big focus on seafood with steak and chicken as well. And you are on the water when you dine here. There are large open windows. It is a very nice, nice restaurant. And I think people forget about it a lot, which they shouldn't. Let's take a look at that menu. Mahi Mahi. That's a good fish. The good fish. And just past Narcuzzi's is a spot that you might use a lot, especially if you're me <laughs> staying at Grand Floridian. It's the boat dock over to Magic Kingdom. So this is where you'll board your friendship boat to get over to the wonderful flagship theme park. And it's also a great spot to watch the fireworks. Plus, you can just look out over the lagoon when you're out here. And even on a gloomy day, look how pretty it is. The lights are already on over at Magic Kingdom. Very magical. So these boats can take you to Magic Kingdom. They can also take you to the Polynesian. The boat route is Magic Kingdom, Grand Floridian, Polynesian, Magic Kingdom, Grand Floridian, Polynesian. So if you hop on it, you can get to either of those places or back here. It's a relatively quick ride. The longest you'll wait is probably for the boat in most cases. I am walking over to the other pool now and there are these beautiful swan topiaries. which are lovely. These are some of my favorite flowers. You can see them a lot in Florida. Um, and then there's this pineapple fountain. Pineapples are a sign of welcome. Listen, you'd be surprised how many pineapple motifs you can see around Disney World. Ooh, I found a movie under the stars board. Wouldn't surprise me if that doesn't happen tonight. This here is Summer House, which is a little sort of like recreational pavilion. You can see lots of beach chairs and things lined up in this wide arcing circle. All right, we've come to maybe my favorite part of Grand Floridian. There is a white sand beach here and I'll tell you when I am here for a meal or here for work or checking out the shops you can usually find me waiting for my reservation right here on this beach in one of those weird little bad things. The beach also coincidentally butts right up to the beach pool. That's probably not a coincidence it was probably on purpose but the beach pool does have this splash area which is my favorite in all of Disney World. I have never played on it because I'm an adult now and I didn't as a child but it's Alice in Wonderland themed. That giant hat fills up with water and dumps just like you just saw. There's also a fire pit here on the beach that is outfitted with cushions that are super cute. I don't know if they'll light a campfire tonight. We'll have to see. Now the beach pool is going to be much more themed than the other pool. So you can already see these huge rock faces. So this one does have this large rock water slide. Tons and tons and tons of beach chairs, of course. And then there's Beaches Pool Bar and Grill, which similar to the other spot have some specialty drinks some food offerings, usually classic stuff. They actually have lobster sliders. Wow, fancy. But definitely all you need to have a wonderful pool day out here at Beach Pool. Maybe not when it's 58 degrees though. Of course, another recreation offering here is Beach Toys. So if you are hanging out on the beach, if it's a little warmer, or if you wanna play Connect Four or Ping Pong, they've got all sorts of things 
for fun out here. So though this building might look like it, it is not a part of the main resort. This is the villas at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, the Disney Vacation Club offering. Now you don't need to be in Disney Vacation Club to book Disney Vacation Club rooms, but they are at priority to Disney Vacation Club guests and they tend to be rather extensive. But let's check out the villas. There is a separate check-in process over here. As you can see, there is a much smaller, but still fairly grand lobby here over for the villas. Look at this fountain with the Mary Poppins penguins. But this is a separate check-in for Disney Vacation Club. There's also an info center over here as well. And a chocolate sculpture of an eagle, maybe? So as you probably saw from my experience this morning, this is a pretty fancy spa. It's full service with 15 treatment rooms and everything from express manicures like I got to facials and herbal wraps and couples massages and not couples massages and anything in between that you might want to want to try out. It did feel like a very luxury experience as well. Um, I got a robe and like spa shoes and I could make tea and it was I got a warm neck towel. All right and you would call me talking about how it's pretty normal to see brides here at Disney's Grand Floridian. That's because this resort is also home to pretty much the capital of Disney fairy tale weddings. This is Frank's studio, which is where brides-to-be, grooms-to-be can meet with wedding planners and talk about their options for their wedding. We should go look in the windows over there. And then about halfway between Grand Floridian and Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, you'll find the Disney World Wedding Pavilion, which is on the water at Seven Seas Lagoon. It boasts views of Magic Kingdom, Cinderella Castle, is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous event space. Very cool that this is an option for those couples who are getting married. And yep, you can see those views of Magic Kingdom that they have over there, but very beautiful space for ceremonies and things like that, which is why you'll oftentimes see brides getting their photos taken around Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. If you're lucky, you might even catch a lucky couple cruising by in the Cinderella coach, which is a very expensive add-on to weddings here where you can actually ride in Cinderella's carriage. And I have seen that as a child, I've seen it as an adult, and every time it takes my breath away how much the brides look like real princesses and the grooms look like real princes. And I love seeing that. So if you're really lucky, cross your fingers that you get to see that because it's so cool. And then over here, you've got the walkway to Grand Floridian and onto the transportation and ticket center, which is where you'll transfer from your monorail to get to Epcot. Technically you could walk if you wanted, but it's a bit of a long walk. Uh, both Grand Floridian and Polynesian are deceptively large for a sense of how long that walk would take. You can watch our Escaping Magic Kingdom video where Molly walked all the way from Magic Kingdom to the Transportation and Ticket Center, which took her about 33 minutes, I think, and she's fast. Look at the door handles. <laughs> dress, some cake options. Oh, that's a bell dress. So pretty. So now we journey back. We got more Grand Floridian to see. One more note about the spa is this is also where you'll find the health club, aka the gym. So if you're trying to get your workout on, you can pop right on over here. Use some of the state of a car, state of a, what? State of art equipment that you'll find inside. Pretty standard thing to find at Disney Vacation Club Resorts is a little grill area and some sort courts as well. You can get equipment from your lockers or the front desk. The basketball court. There's tennis courts too. Look at the views of this building. They're so gorgeous. All right, I promised we would head upstairs. So we're heading upstairs. All right, we made it to the second floor. There's a little photo pass studio here. I don't often see photographers here, so it's cool that there is one. My favorite part is about the second floor is that you can look down to the first floor. So these Victorian hotels that Grand Floridian was based on, around that time it was tradition for these wealthy folks who were staying there to collect things like furniture and oddities on their travels and then bring them to these hotels and leave them there and they would become part of the decor. All right, we've got another merchandise spot with a mouse mercantile. So this is a pretty sizable merchandise shop and it's gonna be focused on souvenirs. So unlike the one downstairs that had more Grand Floridian merch, you're gonna see a lot of the classic Disney souvenirs in here. I want this. Parks Rubik's Cube. I can actually solve a Rubik's Cube for proof. You can watch my Pop Century Resort tour. I <laughs> solved a Rubik's Cube there. Look at that Cinderella carriage. Oh my gosh, there's a crown inside. Grand Floridian's so fancy. Even the floors are fancy. And they've got Mickey and Minnie and the whole gang hidden here. Is Donald? Yeah. There he is. 
I can attribute part of that smell at least to Basin White over here, which is a store you can actually find in Disney Springs, but you can also find it here. And they've got a lot of like bath products, like shampoo, conditioner, soaps, and things like that. It smells really awesome. This is actually one of my favorite places to shop. I always end up with one of these cute little soaps. You come to my house, that's to my bathroom. Now everything has yet to reopen. For instance, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, which is one of three locations where prior to the park closures, little kiddos could get turned into princesses with hair and makeup and things like that. They also had a few things adults could do and some night packages and tiaras and dresses and it's a very magical experience. Unfortunately, has not returned. But they did used to have a location here and it's still here waiting to reopen. Of course, they couldn't call it a monorail resort if it didn't have access to the monorail, huh? All right, and then out here is where you'll find the monorail station, which is your direct line to Magic Kingdom or the transportation and ticket center for transfer to Epcot or just around one of the other monorail resorts. Now, if you do see a monorail just breeze past you, don't freak out. There are express monorails and resort monorails. The resort monorail will stop. The express only stops the transportation and ticket center and the Magic Kingdom. So don't freak if it speeds right past. Monorails come pretty regularly, so we won't have to wait too long. Got some more oddities for you with this Ferris wheel. And down this way, we've got some very fine dining with Citrico's and Victoria and Albert's. So these two restaurants share this sort of like rotunda space up here. Um, this one here is Victoria and Albert's, which unfortunately has remained closed, but this is widely considered the fanciest restaurant in Disney World and perhaps the best as well. As you can see here, it is award-winning with AAA illustrious five diamond award the forbes travel guide five star award glowing zaga reviews and a host of other accolades as well it's essentially the dining centerpiece here at grand floridian if not all of uh, walt disney world if not much of florida and it is an ultra elegant restaurant with a menu that's selected daily by the chef keep in mind if you do want to dine here there is a dress code and we don't yet have news about reopening so keep an eye on all ears net for more information about that and then here is another upscale expensive dining restaurant citrico's which was recently rethemed to add a mary poppins theme it is gorgeous with the new mary poppins theme expect a menu of florida cuisine with mediterranean influence and it does tend to be a little pricey but it is a gorgeous gorgeous spot with beautiful views of Grand Floridian. All that talk of dining, I'm getting pretty hungry again. And lucky for me, our last stop is also our spot for dinner. And that is Grand Floridian, except for one spot, which I'm saving best for last because I'm most excited. But I'm not quite hungry yet for dinner, so I'm gonna head back to the room, get a little bit of work done, and then we can see the mystical final location of the tour. I can hardly wait, but I do need to go do some work. See you in a little. While I walk back to my room, we can talk a little bit about if this resort is worth it. So of course, this is a Disney World Resort Hotel and it is deluxe, which means you get a good number of perks. You get free transportation around the resort, free park parking, early theme park entry, extended park hours, which is a deluxe only perk. And then the Disney dining plan is set to return. So that will be an option as that comes back. Pros wise, you've got the views and theming. This is an absolutely gorgeous resort. It is beautiful to just walk around and hang out around. You've also got the location. It's hard to be being this close to Magic Kingdom and also just a little monorail ride away from Epcot. And it's got amazing dining. There are tons of dining options and many of them are award-winning, spectacularly themed and or just delicious. On the other hand, the cons, this resort is expensive. It is extremely expensive. One of the most expensive in all of Disney World. And that can be a game changer for a lot of people. If you're on a budget, this is not the hotel for you. It's also can get busy. It's not today, but it's certainly extremely popular. It can book up and that does make the grounds pretty busy. You do sometimes share buses, as I mentioned, which can be a little bit of a bummer to the transportation experience. And if you want true luxury, you can book rooms for about the same price at non-Disney resorts, for instance, the Four Seasons Orlando, which is still on property, that have a little bit more of a true luxury experience. Now, this one is giving you luxury in a Disney way, which is special in its own way. But if you're looking for true luxury, you might wanna look into one of those other options like that Four Seasons. Overall, it's certainly a delightful experience if you can afford it. Um, I'm having a good time, but it might not be for you based on that expense. All right, I'm heading back for dinner, but first, a special treat. We gotta stop by the marina. You know what? Taking a real 
quick detour back inside to see if you can see even the edge of fireworks from my room. I don't think you can, but I just want to check. Fireworks. <laughs> um, where'd you get that tiny bottle of champagne? Oh, okay. That's my robe. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, we were going to see if there were fireworks used. There's not any. Okay. <laughs> well, that was weird. Um, so now I'm going to dinner because I got to leave Molly to read in the room, I guess. So as I mentioned earlier, Enchanted Rose Lounge is a very nice lounge offering. You see misers, got a full bar, this beautiful chandelier, and some of my favorite drinks in Disney World, so I'm really excited. I'm gonna grab some food too, because now I'm hungry. So I am in luck because I asked the bartender what the most popular drink is right now, and he said it's the Lavender Fog, which is my favorite drink here. So I went ahead and grabbed it for you. And this has Nolette Silver Dry Gin, Rothman and Winter Creme de Violette, English Breakfast Tea, Vanilla, and Cream. And it is so delightful. I cannot wait to taste it again. It's one of my favorite drinks in all of Disney World. Cheers! It's so good. It's super, like, more like floral than anything because of the lavender flavors to it. It's got a touch of sweetness, but not too much. And I really like when cocktails have a milkiness to it, which, of course, this one does, as you can see from that milk film on top. I have gotten this many times. I will get this many times again. I was so, so, so happy to hear that this was the most popular cocktail, so I could order it for you guys. Um, it's delicious. If you're at Enchanted Rose, I highly recommend this one. But all of their cocktails are amazing. They even have table-side cocktails where they come and mix them at your table and share the story of Beauty and the Beast. So it's really, really an amazing spot. And this is going to be really good, especially with my food that's coming. So for food, I got two things because this is a lounge. You're going to see more small plate portions. So I went for the house-made flatbread which is a flatbread with charred broccolini, seasonal mushrooms, fennel sausage, ricotta salata, and tomato confit. It looks so good, I'm starving. And then I also, of course, got the truffle fries, which is one of my favorite dishes here. It's going to be shaved black truffles and 18 month aged Parmesan on top of truffle fries. And it does come with that aioli as well, so I'm very excited. I'm about to take a monster bite of this flatbread because I need to get everything in one bite for science. So don't judge me. Okay, I have complex thoughts about this. The base is not my favorite. It's actually very soft. There's crisp on the edges, but it's not the best flatbread crust I've ever had. It's not the best flatbread crust I've had in Disney World. The toppings, however, so good. The biggest flavor I'm getting is the burst of the tomato confit. So good. And then I also have the beautiful juicy broccolini, tons and tons of beautiful cheese. So the combo of the flavors on top are wonderful. And this is super filling. Definitely if you're just here for small plates, it's shareable. If you're here for dinner and you're not starving like I am, you could probably eat one of these and it would be a great dinner. The sausage also has a lot of great flavor that's popping. I can taste the fennel too. I will say that the crust just isn't it doesn't have the right amount of crisp, but that's okay. It's making up for it with the toppings. Shuffle fry time. These are something else. These are an amazing lounge bite. You can taste that Parmesan is aged 18 months. You've got beautiful slices of thick black truffle on them. Whatever this dip is, I think it's like a mustardy based um, aioli. So good. And the fries are super thick with a ton of potato. like meat on the inside so this one's definitely a winner for me molly and i both love this one we have oftentimes both on camera and off camera come here and share triple fries and we probably will again so i don't regret this order choice if you need me i'll be right here that was delicious and delightful but after a full day of resort exploring i am sleepy so i'm gonna go try on some food network maybe see if there are any fun reruns on tv Maybe Coco's on. And then I'll see you guys in the morning. Bye. Good morning. It is a bright and not so sunny day because we're in gloomy days apparently. But I am up, I'm Adam, I'm ready for a Magic Kingdom day. Again, we're taking the monorail for science, even though I like to walk and boat, but we're taking the monorail because you might want to take the monorail. Um, but first, I'm gonna get some coffee from my room. All right, don't worry, I'm not gonna walk. I know you're worried that I'm just gonna go renegade and start walking, but I am gonna go this way real quick 
to take the long way to the lobby to check out what the bus stop looks like at this time. It's a little past Magic Kingdom's opening. Some people like to rope drop, some people don't. And it's not a super busy time, but that doesn't mean the buses might not be a little bit busy. So let's find out. All right, the bus stop has got some folks waiting, but it certainly does not look like anyone is having to wait more than one bus, which has been pretty much the case everywhere I've stayed because Disney's got their bus schedules usually on lock. Now that doesn't mean that you might not catch a weird time where the buses are like out of sync and you have to wait a while. It can happen. I've certainly been stuck. But right now, it looks like everyone's getting on the first bus they see. Buses do come about every 20 minutes. All right, the monorail is pretty busy. So this one just loaded and is now full and headed to Magic Kingdom and all these people are still waiting. So you have to keep in mind that Grand Floridian is the last stop on the way to Magic Kingdom. So the most people are going to be on it when it gets here, which means it's gonna be the hardest to find a spot. So I think we'll probably make it on the next one. Jackpot, we got the 50th monorail. All right, just a little four minute ride on the monorail later. I only had to wait like two minutes for it to get there. And we are at a busy Magic Kingdom. I have to say, I do think the monorail is gonna be the fastest way from Grand Floridian to Magic Kingdom. We should probably race them though. If you wanna see us race the different transportation methods from Grand Floridian, let us know in the comments and like and subscribe so you don't miss that video. Hi, I have arrived at Magic Kingdom. I've been here for 26 seconds and I'm already crying at little kids seeing Mickey for the first time. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna go have my Magic Kingdom day, but you can follow us on All Ears Net on social media for more. And you can go check out my Wilderness Lodge Resort video right now. See you there.